Hey there Cosmic Warriors and welcome back to another video and if you are new here my name is Hannah I'm a Western Practical Astrologer welcome welcome so in today's video we are going to be talking all about the archetype of Aries yes it is Aries season so happy birthday to all of you solar Aries out there I hope you have the best day so we're just going to jump right into this. We're going to present here the Aries archetype. So this year specifically, Aries season is from the 19th of March up until the 19th of April, you know, give or take a couple of days, uh, depending on the year. But, you know, before we do dive in, I just want to let you know of astrology products that I have available. You can find all of these over at hannahselsbar.com. So I have practical astrology guides, ebooks, uh, the 2024 calendars there, of course, and some cheat sheets. So like I said, you can find these products over at hannahselsbar.com and you can also book a reading with me over there as well. And if you do want access to new astrology videos early, ad free, you can always join the Patreon, okay? So on Patreon over, over there, you can find daily forecasts, behind the scenes videos, uh, PDF guides to go along with new videos. So yes, if you're interested, the link to the Patreon is in the description box. And I do just wanna take a moment to say thank you so, so much to my patrons over at Patreon. Um, and I do also just want to mention, I'm a couple of minutes early here, okay? <laughs> We're a little bit early today, um, but I do hope that you enjoy this presentation about the Aries archetype. And just one more thing, you know, before we really do dive in, I am going to be hosting another workshop, yes! Very excited about this. Um, I hosted the annual Perfections workshop um, a couple of weeks ago. Thank you to those of you who joined that workshop. I really hope that you benefited from it. So the fascinating thing about this series of upcoming workshops actually is that it's based on you. <laughs> so we're gonna be exploring the life path of the rising signs specifically. And of course, we're gonna kickstart it by looking at Aries. So this is really a call for anyone who has an Aries rising, really, you know, so if you were born with this Aries rising in your chart, I want to hear from you, uh, you can go to the, the link in the description, and you will then be uh, sent through to my website over at hannahselsware.com, and you can sign up, you can register to take part in this workshop, so it's the whole, the whole point of this workshop is to walk you through your life path based on your rising sign, and I want the rising signs to gather together right this is a workshop based on experience it's based on okay let's talk you know let's discuss these houses discuss the journey so yes definitely be sure to sign up if you do have an Aries rising and you're interested it's a great way to meet um other people who share the same rising sign as you you can kind of discuss any similarities there and then the major differences and we'll go through all of those different life areas through the houses through your chart it's going to be really great I'm really looking forward to it I feel as if it's very Jupiter and Gemini, you know, I do have to feel that, I feel that, and we're going to be talking about Jupiter and Gemini um, in the next coming weeks. So yes, get, get involved. I can't wait for you to join if you're interested. Radio. So hello, Danielle, welcome. How are you doing today, Danielle? I hope you're doing good. All right, so we're going to get into this, finally, <laughs> the Aries archetype. Let's do it. I'm just going to um, insert some timestamps. I hope you're doing good today, Danielle. Okay, so the main components. I'm glad. I'm glad, Danielle. That's good. The main components we're going to be looking at then. So the symbol, of course, of Aries is the ram, right? So we kind of think about how rams, they tend to charge, you know, they, they uh, butt heads, they charge at each other uh, for territory, for example, uh, when it comes to mating as well. And that charge, you know, there's so much power behind that. <laughs> uh, 
and the 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 impact right that impact whenever they they hit that's very that's very aries <laughs> very aries aries is sort of like the fist i suppose you could say because as i was doing that i was kind of thinking of you know how my fists are banging together right this is aries energy it's like that whole thing of fist in the air right you know you've just won something and you just go yes right yes you boom you just push your 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 fist up into the air and you think yes i did that i won i made it through you kind of think about uh, the rams and whichever one wins you know it's it's their it's theirs then that territory that made whatever it is um they have won so think about that you know think about that par the par that it must take uh, when it comes to how rams do charge at each other and even just think about how um it's so headstrong this energy and tunnel visioned right this is also aries okay because aries is the energy where we're so focused on a particular thing or a direction and our peripheral vision goes. <laughs> Nothing matters. It's just, okay, I'm focused on this one thing. I'm going toward that target. I'm aiming at that. And you run. You run as fast as you can toward it. This is also very Aries, right? So Aries is this sign that likes to start things, okay? Aries is the initiator of the zodiac, and um, well, along with the other cardinal signs, but Aries is the first cardinal sign. It's the first sign of the entire zodiac, so there really is a lot of initiation um, when it comes to this energy. So like I say, Aries starts things. Aries is the most straightforward, what you see uh, is what you get type of energy. You're going to know where you stand with an Aries and, and they're going to be rather um, direct with you. And of course, we all have Aries energy within us, within our charts. So do just kind of think about that straightforwardness uh, within your Aries house, for instance. So yes, uh, tunnel visioned indeed uh, when it comes to this archetype. And when we even look to the glyph, okay, so if notice notice the, the glyph here of Aries, um, it sort of looks like a set of curved horns and they represent the ram, right? Of course, rams have horns. And these horns are said to symbolize aggression and action. And it's the ram that symbolizes an individual's quest for individualization, okay? So this is about being an individual right seeing that you are separate right you're a separate being you're a separate person to the person um you know beside you next to you and the ram has long been a symbol of virility to the ancients and so the purpose of aries within our lives is to assert strength and energy right to put so much energy into whatever we do and the other thing about it is that Aries, this symbol, this glyph, is it's about new life. It's about fertility, okay? So the first meaning of Aries was fertility. And Egyptian god Amun-Ra was depicted as a man with a ram's head, and he is said to have represented fertility and creativity. Think about that because Aries is also a creator, right? Aries is highly creative, just like the other fire signs. They're, the fire signs are all about creativity, just in different ways. So Aries has these strong associations with new beginnings, creating things, starting things, life, right? Life, but also cycles of life and death. And a subscriber, a viewer of the channel a very long time ago once said to me that um, the, the glyph of Aries looks like a, the female reproductive system and that has stuck with me. <laughs> it has stuck with me because it does, it really does. And when you think of it like that, you consider how, you know, when a woman gives birth, right? Like that's, wow, you know, that's huge. 
And also the fertility piece. Again, you go back to that fertility piece to do with, with Aries. So indeed, Aries is so much about new life, new beginnings, fresh starts. During Aries season, actually, this gives us an opportunity to have a fresh perspective, okay? To gain new insights, a new vision, a new way forward. This is so much about what Aries is about. Um, and the other thing, of course, we want to say about this is that Aries is a fire sign, this cardinal fire sign, right? So the element fire, the modality cardinal. Fire signs, what are fire signs? They are doers, they're initiators, they are creators. Zest for life is fire, right? Fire is spirit. Fire is the part of us, each and every one of us that has this get up and go, right? I'm going to get moving, get tackling the day. And fire is excitement, it's passion, it's victory, <laughs> um, it's enthusiasm, it's having this eagerness. But the cardinal part, right? So cardinal energy is about leadership. It's about being an initiator. It's about being able to start things. So if you can imagine that mixed with fire, that just showcases the amount of enthusiasm and eagerness and spirit located within this very sign. And, you know, you kind of think about how the sun exalts in Aries, which we're going to get to. But really, Aries an airy season within itself is really a time of aliveness and passion and glory and just having this this eagerness to want to get up and move and to start new projects <laughs> and to keep also that fire sort of burning it's it's even that that strength the power that goes into the spark right you know aries is the spark it's that spark of life and you go back to fertility you go back to birth you know the birthing process and it's it's about life you know you kind of even think about how babies you know babies are born via the head right if a baby is you know if it's not turned around correctly so if it's going to be born via its feet that's very 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 dangerous so you know this is when emergency c-sections and things like this come into the equation but babies need to be born via the head and what does aries rule the head okay so <laughs> aries really does showcase the beginning stages even the first house shows us the beginning stages of our lives which we will get to because of course the first house is a part of this and just to continue on then with these different body parts um aries also rules the face and it's interesting because, you know, I was saying there about this, this workshop that it's going to, that's going to be coming up. And the workshop is about, if you have an Aries rising, definitely make sure to join because, because it's going to be all about the Aries rising. But what I have noticed when it comes to Aries risings is that there's, there can be something about their face that's quite um, notable, you know, like a scar, a scratch, a bump, a rash, you know, there's something, a burn perhaps as well. And I think even a big part of this is because Aries can have the tendency of being reckless, getting into accidents, being a little too bold at times, a little too brash, <laughs> a bit foolhardy as well. And I think that goes back to the whole thing of Aries just runs, right? And Aries can be impulsive, <laughs> of course. So accidents can, of course, happen. Aries also rules the hair and the eyes and the brain, you know? So you think just this whole area above, um, above the neck, above the shoulders, this is the whole Aries territory, right? And so that, I think that is really um, interesting, really fascinating, um, thinking about how Aries rules these body parts. But let's move on on to the ruling planet so the ruling planet of Aries is Mars and I even think about the god of war um Aries in the mythology and how you know mm, Aries wasn't so liked <laughs> Aries was not so admired because Aries was all about bloodshed and violence and just being aggressive 
not really being strategic so much. Um, but still, Mars then shows us these parts of ourselves and can sort of represent um, how it is that we can be aggressive and how it is that we can be quite reckless as well at times and maybe not think things through. You know, Mars is a very impulsive part of us. Mars, um, it's more about instinct as well and survival, right? It's this whole thing of survival of the fittest. And this is not necessarily a bad thing. I just want to say that, you know, if we think about this in terms of just nature and, you know, thinking about our survival, we we have this sort of fight or flight energy to us, don't we? We have these in instincts um, that are very much a part of us, but it's how we use our instincts. It's how we follow them. So Mars is so beneficial to us in this way because Mars can sort of help us out and help us see, okay, you know, what is it about my instincts that's maybe guiding me? And the symbol or the glyph here of Mars shows the circle, which is spirit. So that's sort of this boundlessness. But the, so the circle then shows us this divinity quality. But then the arrow is this upward, right? So there's this upward motion to the arrow. And so this, therefore, the spirit is being held down by the force, by our animal instincts. So this arrow then it can also be used to, in a way, raise our human um, animal sort of energy, our, our animal energy to higher levels of consciousness. But it's not about, how do we say, completely doing away with our animal instincts. I think it's about kind of finding that balance, right? It's being able to respect, okay, yes, there's something very instinctive here, but that's not all we are. It's not always about survival of the fittest and, you know, pushing and it's, you know, about me, 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 me and about the self and stuff like this. You know, Aries can be a very selfish sign. That's not necessarily a bad thing. But of course, matters can go to extremes, <laughs> right? We can be overly selfish if we don't sort of team our animal instincts, so to speak. And I think even the the Scorpio expression of Mars can really help us out there in terms of mastery. But anyway, I digress. Yes, the thing about Mars then is that it can show us our own sort of competitiveness. And competitiveness is, it can be useful. It can be a very useful thing to us, right? It can help us, you know, be more driven. Yeah, it can drive us forward. It can help us maybe re-strategize or kind of see a new way, a new vision, a new, you know, a new approach to something. So yeah, it can be good in healthy doses, but of course, competitiveness can be used in really unhealthy ways, right? So there can be that sort of ruthlessness to Mars, this um, very highly territorial energy as well. Like this is mine, this is mine, you can't have it. Even that kind of leans more toward being quite possessive or jealous as well. So we want to kind of be mindful of that. But at the same time, this is not to say that being jealous is a bad thing either, right? Because we can all experience jealousy and envy and any emotion really. But it's it's just more about whenever these sort of emotions are too overpowering or when, when they are out of control, um, and I do think that with Aries, then we we learn, right? We come to learn about these different emotional reactions that we have to people, places and things and these sort of instincts that we have and these animal ur urges and things like this and these desires that we have. And um, so, yeah, it's about how we sort of come to manage these many emotions within ourselves, right? You know, Aries can be a very innocent sign. Um, a sign that has a lot to learn, I think. But when Aries does sort of learn from its mistakes and from its sort of setbacks and things like this, Aries becomes very wise and very powerful and honorable um, and remarkable, actually, as people, as these leaders, these warriors, these brave beings who followed a certain path or they led a certain path um, to victory, right? They become victorious. 
So, so yes, it's, it's all very interesting. And then the last thing I just want to say about this, of course, is with Mars, you know, Mars can look at anger and that's a, a, a an emotion that I feel can be deemed as like really negative, right? <laughs> it's like, oh no, anger. I don't really see anger as a negative thing. Um, you know, when we kind of get into the whole thing of certain emotions being bad or good, I think that's, mm, that's per perhaps not a healthy thing. But yes, anger, of course, if it is not managed well, it can be really destructive. It can be violent. But anger doesn't have to lead to those things. Anger doesn't even have to lead to, you know, yelling and like screaming in other people's faces and things like this. Anger can be done in a sort of manageable way. But, you know, the thing about anger is that anger can help us kind of see, hey, you know what, I'm not getting what I want or I'm not happy about this situation or um, oh, I should have stood up for myself in that situation. So we can use anger in a beneficial way. We can use it as a tool. Hello. Hi. Hello, everyone who is joining. Um, I hope you are enjoying this presentation so far. Thank you for being here. Okay, so we're going to now move on to the first house. If I just do my timestamps. Right, so the first house. What does the first house represent in astrology? Well, the first house is the house of self, right? So this is more so about the person that's sort of underneath the ego, if you will, that, that part of us that is sort of consistent throughout our own journey, throughout our life path. But the first house can also represent our identity. So if you kind of think about it as being told from a young age that you are this, this, and this, and you, well, hey, this is a very simple way of it. The need, your name, right? That's another thing, your name, your title. So, you know, for, for me, my name is Hannah, right? My parents obviously gave me that name since birth. So because they give me that name since birth, everybody within my family said Hannah. And then what happens is I identify with I am Hannah, right? Aries is I am. So the identity then is formed because my parents called me Hannah. And everybody else then called me Hannah. And of course, legally, that is my name. Okay. So think of this type of stuff in connection with the first house in terms of labels and titles and you're this and oh aren't you beautiful oh you're handsome or oh you have a lovely smile or oh I don't like you very much so you kind of this of course these messages we receive from the outside world they can be affirming they can be positive they can be inspirational but they can also be negative and not so kind, right? So think about the first house in terms of that identity that is formed. Now, that identity doesn't necessarily mean that it's, you know, that those labels that, you know, that are placed on you from other people, um, that they're true. That's the other thing. So the first house is sort of like, okay, this is my identity, right? Your rising sign, of course, is located here. So the rising is like, okay, this is my identity and I identify myself with being this way. But you also have to think about the entire chart. And this is why I want to do this workshop to do with the life path of the rising signs, because the first house is also about self-discovery, right? Sort of think of it like this, um, you know how Joseph Campbell talks about the hero's journey? This is so representative of the chart, the birth chart through the lens of the first house. It starts there. And a lot of movies, like really, really popular movies are based on um, his model, Joseph Campbell's model, which by the way, Joseph Campbell was an Aries. <laughs> his son was an Aries. 
Um, and I think he had Jupiter and Mars and Mercury and Aries. So he was very much Aries dominant, which I think is so fascinating to me when I think about how he invented this model. He created it. A pioneer, right? Aries archetype, the pioneers of the Zodiac, the trailblazers of the Zodiac. But anyway, so many popular movies were created then from this model, such as Star Wars, Harry Potter, and The Wizard of Oz. So in these movies, you think about how there is a protagonist and there's an a protagonist and an antagonist, right? There is the protagonist, the main character who sets off, you know, so you think about Dorothy following the yellow brick road, but then there's the antagonist. So this would be like the villain. This would be the, you know, the one who tries to bring the main character down. So you think about the, the wicked witch of the West, right? Who tries to destroy Dorothy along her path. But then you also have all of these other characters within the movies, right? So, you know, you think about Harry Potter, for example, meeting Hermione and Ron and all the other characters. And then you think about Dorothy meeting the, the Scarecrow and the Tin Man and the Lion. And so they these people are all a part of that story. So all of this is to say that the first house is sort of like us being Dorothy, <laughs> right? We're sort of like Dorothy. We're at the very beginning of our yellow brick road and we're going on this trip. Think of it like this as well. Another movie, The Lord of the Rings. My goodness, I love The Lord of the Rings saga. This series, amazing, right? You're Frodo Baggins and you are on a quest, okay? <laughs> Gandalf, Gandalf has arrived and is saying to you, you're going to Mount Mordor, okay? And you're going to destroy the ring. You're on this mission, okay? This is first house territory. But what I want to say about this is, are you ready to take the call? Because not many people are. Mm, mm. This is the thing about it as well. You got to be ready to take the call to adventure. And that is so representative of the first house. <laughs> So yes, the first house is, it's so much about our life path. It's so much about self-discovery. And the incredible thing about it is that what we do is we follow the path toward our sun sign, right? Our sun sign is the, the purpose. It's that, that, that life force, our vitality. And you think about how sun exalts in Aries because this is what it's all about. It's like, hey, the sun is saying, follow, you know, the sun is the hero, I guess, right? This is about the hero's journey. Joseph Campbell, hero's journey. So the first house is like, okay, we're at the very beginning. I've just been born, which is another thing to do with the first house. If you have planets conjunct the ascendant, right? So if you think about the AC symbol that you see located in your first house, of course, depends on the house system you use. But planets conjunct your ascendant will tell you something about your birth. It's very fascinating stuff. Very fascinating stuff. I know for myself, I have Jupiter conjunct the ascendant. And the very first home, the very first house I was in as a baby was a minister's house. I was very sick as a baby. Okay. But the church prayed for me, right? Jupiter religion. So that is not interesting. Very interesting. So consider what planets you have conjunct the ascendant. So as I was trying to say there, imagine it as if with the first house, you've just, you've been born. And of course, you know, when we're babies, we're unconscious. Like we have no clue of what's what, how to talk, anything. We're so unaware. I honestly, my memories as a baby, not non-existent, non-existent. I, I couldn't even tell you the first memory I have. But anyway, that's my own thing. Maybe you're someone who is very good at that. You know, you have memories from when you were four or three. It's freaking incredible, some people's memories. But still, the first house then looks at our very, very earliest stages in life. And I mean, really early stages. I mean, whenever I was a baby, I, you know, I was very delicate looking um, and I was, as I say, you know, I wasn't well, so I had to be fed um, medicine. 
And that's to me, so Virgo, right? I've got a Virgo rising. I've got Jupiter and Virgo. I have planets in the sixth house. So sixth house to do with health there as well. But yes, consider then those early stages of your life, because this is what this is what the first house is going to show you. So the first house then looks at self-discovery, our development, early childhood. And I mean like the earliest, earliest, earliest stages of your childhood. But these stages, what they're so important. They're so important. And it's really fascinating when you get into annual perfections, you know, um, but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> that's a whole other thing. I'll not go on with that too much. But, um, which by the way, there is a video available over at the Patreon um, about annual perfections, about what I was just saying there to do with those beginning stages of life. Just saying, still, the first house can also then look at new beginnings. So if you think about planets that kind of cross the threshold in your chart from the 12th house to the first house, new beginnings, there's fresh insights, there's fresh perspectives. I mean, I know for me, whenever Virgo season rolls around and the sun enters Virgo, I'm like, oh, I'm in my element. I'm feeling good. Okay. So think about that in terms of transits that enter that first house for you. So yes, there's a fresh perspective that is ushered in through the first house. And naturally, you know, the first house can also represent our mask, right? The type of mask we wear, the persona we have as well. But the thing I just want to say about the mask, you know, this can, whenever I first got into studying astrology, I felt like it wasn't very, like, mm, how do I say accurate to what I felt about me? Because I do identify so much with my Virgo qualities. And I kind of think, how is that a mask? It's still... It's still a part of me. I still feel these Virgo traits, you know, because the mask to me just sort of seems like it's fake or it's phony. But to me, it's not being fake or phony. To me, it's like, no, but I, I do feel this. I do identify with these qualities about myself. But I think the thing about the mask is it's just that it's showing us that there's so much more to us. There's so much more than just this outer layer, right? That actually there's a lot to us as humans, just, you know, um, in general. And there's more to us than just our rising sign. <laughs> and the other thing as well, of course, is that we can do this perhaps, right? We can kind of sort of put on a mask at times or put on this persona, right? Um, and maybe we can do this in times during times whenever we feel uncomfortable, whenever we don't feel safe, right? We go back to survival, right? To do with Mars and the Aries archetype. So maybe there's a layer of that happening. But the other thing I want to mention is the first house also points toward our goals and our aims, right? So there's goal setting involved in the first house. There's this sort of energy of, yes, I can do this. I want this. I'm you know, going back to this whole journey quality, the self-discovery quality to this house. So do keep that in mind. And the final thing, well, a couple more things. One is the first house can so, can uh, point toward our physical appearance, right? So actually how we look, our sort of facial structure, how it's made, you know, our hair, our eyes, we go back to Aries and the body parts that Aries rules in astrology, which is so interesting. Um, and, you know, the other thing about the first house in terms of physical appearance is it can also be said that it's our physical body. So it's our whole body that is kind of shown through the first house, which I do see. But something that I've come across within my own sort of studies uh, to do with astrology is the second house can also lean to this or kind of point to this as well. Um, and I think it goes back to those words of I am and I have. So I am is more first house Aries <laughs> energy. And then I have is more second house Taurus energy. You know, you're not going to say that I am an arm or I am my legs, right? You're going to say, I have arms, I have legs. So to me, I just think there's more to this. I think the second house can also sort of point toward our physical appearance in this way. But I do think that the first house is more about the head and more so focuses on the, the head area. And the last thing I want to mention about this house is... <sighs> 
<laughs> how we rise, right? I remember I made some um, fun Instagram posts to do with this a couple of years ago, but it can literally showcase how we rise in the morning, right? So how do you wake up in the morning? How do you approach the day? How do you take on the day, right? So there are just a couple of different things to keep in mind when it comes to exploring the first house. And let's see. Thank you for joining everyone. Hello, Keen. Hello, Kina. Welcome to you. Hi, Jessica. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Oh, you say you have little to no um, childhood memories as well. Oh, it's so hard to remember. Square the Ascendant. And Danielle, you say you've got Moon Sextile the Ascendant. Yeah, definitely look at the bigger picture. So I'm going to move on now to this section. Okay. Oh. Let's see. Okay. So let's now look at this section. All right. So Mars is connected with the day of the week, Tuesday, right? So Tuesday can typically be a pretty action-packed day for most people. Uh, think about Mars, action, drive, stuff like this. But let's break down these parts, right? So these dignities. Mars then is home in the sign of Aries. So people with Mars in Aries tend to be quite straightforward when it comes to their energy levels, when it comes to their drive. They can have this sort of what you see is what you get attitude um, and perhaps even no nonsense, I would say. I mean, I have a sister. I have a sister who has Mars in Aries and she can at times be like this. But yes, there is, there's a quality to people with these placements, you know, where, or with this placement rather, where it is just more about, okay, this is what we're going to do and let's just do it. And you're going to know where you stand with people who have Mars and Aries, which can actually be pretty useful, <laughs> quite, quite useful um, because you don't have to guess. OK, you don't have to guess about where you, you sort of sit with them. Um, and I would also say that people with Mars and Aries, very ambitious people, uh, the types of people who know what they want and are willing to go for what they want and not really sitting on the sidelines. Right. Not really thinking things through. It's just this. OK, I see the thing. I want the thing and I go for the thing and I get it right. It's that it's that approach. It's just straight through and you go. So that can be wonderful. OK, so when we look at Venus, then um, Venus being in Aries means that Venus is in detriment, right? Because Venus, of course, rules Libra in astrology and also uh, Taurus, but with the opposition then, because with Venus being in Libra, Venus in Aries, this one can be a little bit more complicated because the thing about Venus is, Venus is more about compatibility, cooperation, how do we fit? <laughs> Venus wants to relate. Venus is more about attraction, right? So Mars, for example, Mars and Aries, can look at those um, urges and more so saying, hey, I'm going to be somewhat direct here and I'm going to assert myself and I'm going to initiate. There is that initiation process that happens. But with Venus, Venus is more about, okay, let's try to even compromise, right? Because Venus is more about relationships and relating to other people, kind of seeing how you can weigh things out a little bit more, especially with Venus being in Libra. It is more about, okay, let's weigh out the situation. What do you think? What do you think? But Venus and Aries people then, 
and compromise is not really on their agenda so much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and this is not to say that people with Venus and Aries can't compromise. Of course not. It's just that I think it's more so about, okay, right. Well, this is, this is what I think. And this is what I, what I'm getting at here. And it's not really taking into consideration, um, other people so, so much. Um, but what I will say is that because there is this blend of the Venetian energy and the Mars, the Martian, Martian energy, people of Venus and Aries can be so hot and sexy and fiery, like smoky, right? You know, these, these are the people who um, can give off a lot of sex appeal, you know, a lot of sex appeal. I think Shakira has Venus and Aries, I believe. But yeah, um, there's just something very, very hot about their sensuality and even their ability to be honest and raw about their sexuality as well. And, and that can be really very um, motivating or encouraging to other people or inspiring to other people as well. And I'll even say this, if a person who has Venus and Aries really loves you or you know if they really want to show their appreciation towards you you know they're going to be direct about it <laughs> not really gonna not really gonna wait around <laughs> there's also the thing here where love and relationships can be seen as a conquest right a conquest an adventure okay um and perhaps you know to me it's sort of like a a storybook, um, a romantic novel, a rom-com, you know, I'm sort of getting these, these um, feelings when I think about Venus and Aries. But I think the detriment part of it comes into play where, um, you know, it's, it can be quite um, strong, right? Venus and Aries can really put it on strong. Um, and maybe, you know, for certain people who aren't, you know, used to that, it's like, oh, yeah, that's a lot, right? That's a lot. <laughs> but it's not to say it's bad. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know, it's not about bad or good or anything like that. I'm really trying not to come at this um, through that approach. But there's still, I'm just trying to describe, you know, with that detriment part of it, that, you know, Venus is a lot more gentle and a lot more soft <laughs> as a as a sort of influence but when you merge that with Aries it's oh, it's more oh you know <laughs> a bit more aggressive like love me not you know <laughs> so, anyway <laughs> I love you Venus and Aries okay right so let's now move on to exalted right so the sun the sun is exalted in the sign of Aries. And this means that the sun can be fully expressed. So the sun, right? The sun is so much about our vitality, our life force, our ego, our self-expression. It says, hey, you know, I'm expressing myself. And Aries is so authentic. It's so raw and real, keeps it straight with you. Uh, Aries has this desire to want to express um, and not to really sort of get in their heads or to overthink it either. I love that about Sun and Aries um, individuals, right? And it's it's like, don't overthink it. Don't, <laughs> don't just take that information and analyze it too much. You know, maybe this sort of speaks to my Virgo qualities a little bit. Uh, because I can be like that. So maybe I do have a lot of sort of admiration and respect for people who have sun and Aries because, you know, there's that, there's that childlike innocence. <laughs> there can be this, this playfulness as well to people who have sun and Aries too. Um, but yeah, there is a, a realness and an authentic, authentic approach uh, to people who have sun and Aries. And I think that that's the really amazing thing about the seasons. So we're in Aries season right now. So when the sun travels through the sign of Aries and we, we um, 
experience every season it is so much about okay this is the focus everyone it's time to be real it's time to be honest with ourselves it's time to be honest with other people who are you right aries is so much about who are you right who am i who am i aries says i know who i am i know what i'm about right so this is Aries' season it says hey you know what you're about come on you've got this right that's a big Aries thing, I've got this. <laughs> I got this, okay? And I can do this. I am the boss, right? I'm the best. <laughs> I am the best. I'm the main character, okay? <laughs> okay. I'm obviously just teasing a little bit. I'm just joking and having fun with you. But just still think about that because that that's a pretty powerful thing to know who you are that that's a powerful thing so sun and aries great now this is where we get into the fall right so saturn being in aries means that saturn is in its fall and this is when the energy of saturn is not so there's this kind of um diminished energy um and so what this can indicate is that actually there can be insecurity surrounding the self, insecurities surrounding who one is, right? So we kind of go along the lines of who am I and I know what I am, this type of stuff, identity and, and everything to do with the sun and Aries. Well, if Saturn's there, this actually can limit these qualities a little bit. It's not to say that it's bad. It's not to say that it's wrong. It's just that I think this is looking at how such matters require some more effort. Or it's that, you know, there's certain life experiences and things like this um, that people with Saturn and Aries go through. And then the after they kind of go through certain um, situations then and experiences, then I think they come to really understand themselves a whole lot more. And I think as well, there's a lot of acceptance in this, right? Self-acceptance to do with people who have Saturn and Aries. It's just that, you know, there can be times in their younger years where perhaps who they are, it, it just didn't feel like who they who they were was enough. It's just there's this whole thing of I'm not enough, I'm not good enough, I don't know if I can do this, right? So I was saying there about with Sun and Aries, it's this whole energy of, I've got this, I can do this, okay? But Saturn and Aries sort of goes, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. Do Can I do this? I don't think so. And here's the thing, you know, I, within my chart, the sun is conjunct Saturn. So I can kind of relate a little bit to this, I think, and um, perhaps not, not um, in the same way as, of course, having Saturn and Aries. Um, but yes, there can be some restriction, basically. But the amazing thing about Saturn is that Saturn is so much about discipline, self-mastery. Um, it's this planet where, you know, when we really put in the work, when we give it time, when we put in that effort, oh, we can do wonderful, remarkable things. We can be respectable. We can showcase dignity. So people who have Saturn and Aries, you know, these things that I talk about to do with the Aries archetype, sure, those qualities may have been limited or quite restrictive, especially in your younger years, but you really grow into these qualities. And if anything, you become like an expert, <laughs> right? You really, you know, it's saying about, oh, I've got this, I can do this. You're like, 100%, I'm on level 100. I definitely got this because I have all of this experience behind me. <laughs> so yeah. And lastly, I want to say, Saturn and Aries people, your Saturn return is coming up in the next few years. So mm, get excited for that. Okay. So oh, huge changes coming as a collective. Oh, all right. So let's move on. Let's see. Hello, Catherine. Welcome. So this is talking about 
the Aries archetype today. Right, so I'm just going to do some timestamps. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to explore these deacons. The three deacons of Aries. So each sign, of course, is 30 degrees. And what we're going to do is we're going to split them into three element triplicities. So we have from zero to 10 degrees, the Aries deacon, from 10 to 20 degrees, the Leo deacon, and then from 20 to 30 degrees, the Sagittarius deacon. I have put dates there, but of course, do give or take um, uh, one, one day or so. Uh, so from the 19th to the 29th of March would be within the Aries Deacon. So if you have, let's say, for instance, you were born with Sun in Aries at five degrees, you would be within that Aries Aries Deacon. And then we move over to the next one uh, from the 30th of March until the 9th of April. So if you, for example, have Mercury in Aries around 14 degrees, right, 14 degrees, it would be within the Aries Leo Deacon. And then lastly, we have here the Sagittarius Deacon from the 20th to the 19th of April around that time. So if you were born, let's say you were born with Moon in Aries at around 28 degrees, then you would be within the Aries Sagittarius Deacon. So that's an interesting thing to remember. Okay, move over. So, what does, let's see. What does the sign of Aries teach us? If we're passionate about something, we're more willing to keep at it and stay motivated. The wonderful thing about this archetype is that it's a big self-motivator. Aries doesn't wait around for someone to say, hey, 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 you need to do this, you need to do this. No. If Aries really wants, okay, the key word being want, if Aries wants to do something, they will do it. If they don't want to do something, they'll not do it. It's really that simple. Like, it's really... It's really, <laughs> like I've been trying to say, you know, Aries is very much what you see is what you get straightforward. If they want to do it, they'll do it. If they don't want to do it, they'll not do it. Naturally, of course, life does not work like that, Aries. Okay. Life does not work like that. And that can be a difficult thing to come to learn. But still, we do learn from this sign um, that we can, of course, be our own, you know, motivation. And um, the more that we're actually passionate, when we're really passionate about something, when we're really feeling fired up, like, yes, I'm so into this, we're going to keep at it. The thing about Aries, of course, is that Aries can get a bad rap for, you know, starting loads of projects and not finishing them. Um but here is something I want to say about that is if Aries is genuinely, genuinely really passionate, and I mean passionate, they're going to follow it through. If, if they really, truly want to achieve that thing, they're goal oriented, right? Aries is an archetype, is a sign that's highly goal oriented. It's sure it may not be about those longer term sort of 10 year plan, you know, 15 year plan, like Capricorn and Saturn energy. Okay. But Aries is still goal oriented and it sort of says, okay, you know, I have a goal. I want to maybe go to the gym a couple of times a week, you know, or maybe I want to drink water every day, you know, making sure I've got a couple of liters of water. Right. So Aries, when they get that idea in their head and it's like, right, I'm passionate about this. I'm motivated by this. They're going to keep at it. And Aries can be highly ambitious. So keep this in mind, you know, when it comes to Aries in your own chart and think about these energies uh, to do with this archetype in your own life. Right, next. It's best to choose our battles wisely. Oh, yeah. 
Aries can have the tendency of not choosing its battles wisely, but learns. This is the thing about Aries. Aries can be so like childlike, so childlike and naive as well, perhaps. That's not our thing, right? Being naive, kind of foolish, kind of reckless, especially in their younger years, okay? It's sort of as if Aries is the energy where we become so consumed by our impulses, right? Every impulse is like, oh, yeah, I want that coffee. I'm going to get it. Oh, yeah, I, I want to do this. I'm going to go and buy this thing, right? Your impulses can take over. But Aries matures. Aries really starts to come to a place of inner wisdom and being able to identify, okay, I'm being impulsive right now. Do I really want that? Do like, do I really, really want that? Or am I just going for that because that's the thing that I've repeatedly done over and over and over? Okay. And it kind of feeds into my own impulses. So Aries learns to be really mindful, to be honorable as well uh, as a sort of sign. There's a lot of honor to this sign. So yeah, Aries in their younger years, years could be the type of sign that sort of just jumps into the fight, right? Just jumps in, doesn't even know like why it's happening, who started it, what's going on. But Aries just sees red, right? Danger, 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 instinct, right? Jumps into the fight wants to, def to defend their loved one or protect whoever it is. Bam, 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 bam. But Aries learns that, you know what? I'm going to be wise. Hey, you know what? There's consequences to me doing that. What wh is it worth it? Aries gets to the point in life where it's like, is it worth my time? What are the ramif ramifications of me doing that? Ramifications of me doing that. What are the consequences of my actions, right? So Aries gets to this point. Your autonomy matters. Your choices, your actions. Aries reminds us of our autonomy. Aries reminds us that actually, you know, when we talk about the danger stuff, like I was mentioning, that yeah, there can be real dangers out there, right? And I'm, I mean it, you know, there can be real predators out there. Predators, who want to attack, who want to put us down, who are mean, cruel, manipulative, etc. And Aries just has this like big red flag thing. It's like, warning, 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 warning. Oh, oh, I'm getting an instinct about this. Oh, my God, it's saying something about this person. Okay, I'm going to redirect myself. So Aries really teaches us about the power of our body, right? Our body is going to communicate to us such strong feelings about situations and people. So I think there's also a lot of trust in this, right? To trust our own sort of choices and to be mindful then of, you know, what our body needs and what it's signaling to us. And that, yes, our independence, our autonomy, you know, these things, they matter. And it is also important to protect ourselves. And I guess with actions and choices sort of goes back to the previous point that yeah we learn through Aries that our actions do matter right so the actions that we make in life the choices that we make they are a part of a, a process every like every action every choice you've ever made in your life have led up to this very moment in time so Aries is also sort of karmic, I suppose you could say in this regard, um, kind of interesting when you think about Libra. What I even find interesting about this is, you know, as soon as we get into the Zodiac and we enter Aries, instantly, like instantaneously, Libra comes into the action. And it's the same thing with all the other signs, right? Because Libra is a part of Aries and Aries is a part of Libra and they're within this axis. Of course, I'm breaking it down and I'm really just focusing on each archetype at a time. But yeah, you know, Libra also is a part of the Aries theme. Right. So childlike innocence can feel inspiring. And we're more willing to take risks and start things, even if we are afraid or unsure of ourselves. 
So that's that giddiness. <laughs> Aries has this giddiness, this, this energetic, like, oh, rush. You know, that's the, the childlike innocence, the awe, the, you know, seeing something for the first time as a child. I mean, I don't, I often get so nostalgic about this type of stuff. And I, I, was, I think it was even just today or yesterday, and I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, you know, I remember the first time that I did that. And it's just, it's never the same. I remember what it was. So I was watching the movie Ruins. I don't know if you've seen that movie before. It's a pretty bad movie. Like it's a pretty terrible movie. And I'm sorry if you do like it. <laughs> but the point is, right, I was watching that movie as an adult. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, it's just not the same. You know, I was sitting you know, safe and cozy and I have my popcorn, I'm eating my popcorn and I'm having my cup of tea. And I just had these memories of being a teenager and go, going into my room. And I remember watching that same movie with my, my ice cream. I remember I had, I used to have a big tub of um, chocolate Ben and Jerry's ice cream. I was eating it with the spoon and I was just watching it. I was so cozy and I was really into the movie and it, Oh, and of course, I didn't have social media at the time, so I wasn't checking my phone every two seconds. <laughs> but the point is, is that I remember that yesterday I was like, it's not the same. It's just not the same, right? Childlike innocence is just beautiful, right? You, you know, as a child, going to Disneyland is so much different to going to Disneyland as an adult. You know, Christmas, freaking Christmas. Oh, the, those times when I just remember getting so excited about, oh, it's Christmas Day. Oh my gosh. Ah. Right. The giddy feelings. This is the whole thing I'm trying to say. It's like, this is what Aries reminds us of. This is the archetype of Aries. It's the adventure, right? We go back to Frodo and Frodo going on an adventure or. It was more Bilbo, actually, Bilbo Baggins, right? And the, the Hobbit, right? Bilbo Baggins is excited about the adventure. He's like, I'm going on an adventure. I'm going on an adventure. Oh, you know, this is Aries energy. It's the excitement. It's the enthusiasm. It's the rush. Oh, and that is enough. That is enough for us to take the risk, to do the thing, to start the thing. I mean, this, what I do on here was all started because I had those feelings because my feelings of astrology was, this is so interesting. This is so exciting. Oh my gosh, I want to learn more. Oh, I'm so passionate about this. And it drives you through. It keeps you going and keeps you going. And that's Aries. Okay, next one. Winning is great, but often we don't win. And that is okay, right? It's okay not to win as well. <laughs> Of course, Aries is the archetype that says, I want to win. Winning is also awesome. And you feel amazing after you win, even just personal bests, right? If you if you go to the gym, for example, maybe you're on the treadmill and, you know, you do some running and you did a mile in a certain amount of time. And then the next week you go and you do a mile in a shorter amount of, amount of time. And you're like, oh, yes, that was a win. That was a victory, right? Aries says celebrate the small wins, appreciate them, and outdo your personal best. You know, Aries reminds us that the main person we should be competing with is actually ourselves, right? Of course, there is competition as well in life, and that's also okay, right? You think about certain sporting events, certain competitions, etc., that you take part in. Still, we're reminded that often we don't win, but it's okay not to win because the thing is, is that we can learn. We can learn from our mistakes. We can learn from, oh, okay, right, I didn't win. Why? Why did I not win? What can I learn from that? How can I improve? How can I get better? Aries reminds us of this. Another thing is if you want to see something change in your life, 
you must act as the catalyst for that change, right? How many times, you know, do we kind of sit around and we wait, right? We wait for the other person to change, for the person in work, for our partner, for whatever, you know, for our friends to maybe organize a certain thing. But it's like, hey, 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 Ari says, hey, why don't you, why don't you do that? Why don't you initiate that? Why don't you jump into the conversation? Why don't you start that thing? Why are you waiting around for everybody else to, to do this, but you need to be that change, right? Aries reminds us that we can be that catalyst. And here's the remarkable thing about being a catalyst. We inspire other people. If, think about that, how you could very well, in an indirect way, inspire someone else, right? You may be um, deciding that you want to go on a trip somewhere, or you want to start working out, or uh, you want to join a certain club or a certain, you want to start a certain hobby, right? When you do that and you do it for yourself, you could very well inspire and motivate other people because other people are, are like, oh, you did that. I'm so curious. Like, tell me more. What did you learn from that? I would like to know. And you can sort of contribute. You can, you know, you can have more of this collaborative approach then. And other people, can also change, right? So when we change ourselves, imagine the ripple effect that that has on the world around us. And the last thing is <laughs> the importance of rest. <laughs> okay. The importance of rest and being able to slow down, right? Aries learns this from its next sign, Taurus. Aries can kind of um, burn itself out at times. Um, Aries can also have the tendency of not really taking its time, running into accidents, okay, bumping into things, being impulsive, being reckless, okay, starting all these projects like I was saying earlier, but then there can there can be that lack of completion because <gasps> there's another thing. Oh my gosh, this is interesting. Oh, you know, uh, so <laughs> yeah, Aries learns a lot from its next sign, Taurus. Okay, so let's move on to the strengths of Aries. So some strengths, Aries is bold, okay? Aries is daring. Aries is courageous. Aries is the one who is bold enough, daring enough to do the thing. And that within itself is like, whoa, oh my gosh, right? You did that? Wow, right? Aries has that ability to go, hey, do not care. Aries is truly a sign that does not care about oh, what's people going to think of me when I do this? And when I do this, and when I do this, no, 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 no. Aries is like, okay, I want to do that. I'm going to do that. Screw the haters, right? <laughs> That's what Aries says. But Aries is also confident. Aries has this, this confidence ab about it. This is what we learn from this archetype to tap into confidence. But the other thing I want to say about confidence, confidence is also being able to say and admit when you can't do something. And maybe that's something that, you know, Aries can also come to learn a little bit. That confidence can also speak volumes whenever you're able to say, hey, you know what? I'm not actually not too, I'm not too sure about that. You know, I'm not too sure. You know, I think, I think Aries has that ability to be curious enough to kind of go, yeah, um, I'm not sure. Can you give me that or tell me more about that, please? But Aries can also have this side to it where, you know, Aries just wants to learn everything super quick and to know it all super quick. But this is where patience, of course, comes into it. But yeah, I just wanted to say that confidence can also look like being able to say, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Not sure, actually. So yeah. Um, the other thing is the strength stand, they stand up for the underdog and defend the vulnerable. Oh my goodness. Aries is able to see, hey, this person's being picked on. This person's being bullied. That's that's not okay. Aries will just be like, hey, what the flip are you doing? Stop, right? I've seen this. I've seen this from people who have Aries placements in my life. The moment that you, you know, try to go after, like, 
an Aries loved one or anything like that. Oh, they're going to get so defensive, so protective, fierce. Like they can be fiercely loyal in this way. And yeah, they can stand up for the underdog and um, for people who are maybe being treated unfairly and stuff like this, you know, Aries is able to stand up and, and stand for freedom and truth and justice as well individuality and identity so yes they are aware of themselves they're aware of what they want and oh my gosh isn't that admirable to know what you want to know who you are isn't that hot that's so admirable um being a pioneer they are leaders right strengths strengths of strengths of aries they are indeed pioneers leaders you know i was saying there about joseph campbell being this huge pioneer this huge trailblazer uh, with the hero's journey just remarkable um just following on from a fun collaboration that i did with jasmina uh, we looked at mystery charts and i chose lady gaga for one of the mystery charts and reading up on her She's seen as a pioneer within, or sorry, a trailblazer is the, the correct term, but yeah, a trailblazer within the entertainment industry. And she's got her son in Aries Venus as well, I believe. So yes, you can, you can see these qualities uh, within her. Spontaneous, right? They are spontaneous. Aries is the type of energy that says, hey, you want to go on a trip now? And you're like, you want to go now? Oh. My Virgo energy is like, I don't know, I'm not very prepared. Oh, I've got work tomorrow. Oh. But then I've got my moon in Aries. And there's times when I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. When I was younger, I think I used to be a lot more adventurous. I mean, I've done solo trips to different places around the world. Um, certainly would not do that today, I don't think. <laughs> but I was young, right? Childlike innocence with Aries okay Aries is that type of archetype that type of person who's able just to flip and fly around the world solo hasn't planned anything you know hasn't really packed very well doesn't have really doesn't really have much money in their bank account you know I remember I went to Australia with like a, a, a grand in my bank account was I thinking no no I wasn't <laughs> but, but am I alive I am alive and I'm, I'm here to tell the story <laughs> this this is Aries and it's 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 fun right it's fun it's spontaneous it's adventurous Aries is also super creative enterprising and innovative I mean you're going to see people with Aries placements and positions of par um, and and I don't say that you know in a negative way of course I mean like leadership and more influence uh, business things like this yeah you're going to see them front and center, right? You're going to see them leading the teams, leading their own path, right? Out there in the open for all to see. Um, and the last thing is, I suppose I've already sort of mentioned this, but Aries is daring enough to do the thing, right? The thing that you're putting off, the thing that you're procrastinating, the thing that you don't want to do, Aries is already doing it and it's probably five steps ahead. Okay. Bye, Aries. So yeah, strength of, uh, strengths of Aries, we gotta love it. Um, you say, Jessica, this is where you see Aries energy comes through for you, protection of others. Yes, the personal power. Fake it to be me, okay. <laughs> um, and hello to you, unknown, welcome. Hi, hello to you. Right, so weaknesses. Oh, we all got weaknesses, don't we? We've all got weaknesses. And when I say this, of course, I'm always saying these things with love and I have an Aries moon. So I'm like, ah, yeah, I get it. I get it. Okay. So Aries weaknesses. Right. So they can be foolish, naive, reckless. And I mean to a fault. Sure. I mean, being foolish at times can be used to their benefit in a way. You know, foolishly sort of stumbling into a situation and actually maybe it's a little bit reckless and it's a little bit dangerous, but they find their fate and they're like, yeah, landed it. You know, sort of like I was saying a minute ago about traveling around the world solo and things like that. And I wasn't super prepared. And yeah, probably very quite, probably quite foolish to to um, do such things and um, to not be so prepared. But as I'm trying to say, you know, 
there's still a lot in that. There's still so much that can come from those experiences. But yes, weaknesses could be foolish, reckless, and kind of naive. Okay. This is where their life experiences really matter. They're learning, learning from their mistakes. Aries can also be quick to anger and quite aggressive, especially when they're younger, especially when they're not really sure, you know, of their, the strengths of their anger. And of course, this is not to say that anger is bad. I was trying to say that earlier. It's not bad to be angry. It's just more about what you do with that anger. If you start punching things, if you start hitting people, if you start throwing things, if you start screaming and, you know, some stranger's face in the middle of the the shop, you know, mm, 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 it's not it's not a good look. OK, so, yeah, the, these things um, can can perhaps show up then when it comes to this archetype can burn their bridges. This is a big thing. Burning your bridges. This is something that Aries needs to be cautious of. So for instance, what this could look like is, you know, someone who has a lot of Aries energy, perhaps in their chart, and they join a job, okay, they get a new job somewhere, and they work there maybe for a couple of weeks, and then they kind of go, oh, I don't want to work here anymore. I'm just not going to call. I'm just not going to go in. Bye. Uh, and you're like, where is such and such today? Oh, they just haven't called. Okay, well, that's a big massive X through their name for the rest of entirety, you know? No, you know, so it, it's sort of like you can't really go to that job then and sort of get a reference from them or you can't really use that, that employer as um, a way to maybe put on your resume for the next job because, of course, the next job is going to go so where did you work before? And you're like, um, I just didn't call. You know, you're not going to say that, obviously, but this is what I mean. Burn can burn their bridges, right? And I think this is also where the maturity comes into the equation. Um, and, of course, the ramifications of our actions. Consequences, Aries. There are consequences to your actions. Also, not the best at listening. Mm. Okay, this is a, can be a weakness. They they may not listen very well. I mean, sure, okay, Aries could be nodding along and kind of going, yeah, yeah, uh huh. But internally, they could be thinking about when am I going to speak next? When am I going to speak next? And then boom, you know. So sort of like, okay, not the best listeners. But this is also something that can be worked on with time, of course. Also interruptive. No, no, don't get me wrong. We can all interrupt. We can all, you know, talk over each other, et cetera, et cetera. But Aries can be, you know, really interruptive where it's like very strong and you can't even get the rest of your sentence out. Um, inconsiderate as well. Inconsiderate toward other people's feelings, perhaps not the most sensitive. And maybe that comes about because they can be so direct, right? And so straightforward and to the point where, you know, people who may need a little bit of an extra care okay they need a bit of easing into the the situation or more consideration they're sort of like thinking mm, I'm not about this I don't really like this I don't feel very good right now so there is that um they can start things sort of like I was saying but don't finish them so there can be that inconsistency there can be this whole thing of there's just this trail of unfinished projects wherever they go now with that being said again I want to just be clear about this this is not to say that what I'm saying you know these things are bad right these are super bad things etc um of course we also notice with this that perhaps there's just certain projects and things like this that Aries just isn't that interested and that's okay, right? It's just, they're not that passionate about that thing. It's not really for them and that's okay. It's okay to start something and not finish it. But if it becomes a pattern, okay? If it becomes this thing that's always reoccurring and they're always burning their bridges and they're starting relationships and then next thing you know, the relationship is, is on fire and it's like, oh my gosh, you know, every project they start, it's just where did it go? You know, this is where we're seeing the challenges, right? 
Uh, so inconsistent. <laughs> they can be inconsistent. They can be unreliable. They can be impulsive. Then this is where we also get back to the whole thing of them being younger, right? Whenever Aries is younger, whenever they're perhaps not fully grown or they haven't really matured so much, this is where we see greater potentials for being impulsive and unreliable. Headstrong to a fault. Mm. Mm -hmm. Might not learn from others or their mistakes because they believe their way is the right way. Okay, Aries is that type of energy that just puts two fingers in their ears and goes la 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 la, not listening, not listening, no 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 no, right? And no matter how many people are trying to say, Aries, hey, like, have you thought of this? I'm trying to warn you, I'm trying to help you. Aries just goes, no, 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 no. But hey, perhaps this is also the path for Aries, for many Aries. This is sort of like, you know what? You got to go through that to sort of understand why people were saying to you, that wasn't the best thing to do. That wasn't very good. But this is also how we learn. <laughs> and this is how Aries learns anyway, perhaps. But I do just, just want to mention that. And I do also think that, again, Aries can eventually learn um, that... It's important to also take other people's feedback and advice into consideration from time to time. Yes. Okay. So let's now look at some journaling questions to ask yourself. Some journaling questions to ask yourself. All right. Is there a project or challenge, sorry, is there a project or challenge I really want to start, but I'm putting it off because I'm afraid of failure? Mm -hmm. How do I behave when I really feel angry? Am I able to regulate and express my anger in healthy ways? When was the last time I did something adventurous or spontaneous, something that I'm passionate about? How do I react when I lose or when I come up against an obstacle? Do I advocate for myself well? Do I have a strong sense of self? Am I able to learn from my mistakes or do I repeat the same mistakes over and over? So where is Aries in your chart? Which house does Aries rule in your chart? Because this is going to be the area of life where you are adventurous, where you're brave. It's going to represent your drive, your motivations, your willpower, your actions, how you assert yourself, how you take action then. It's also going to show an area of life where you can be angry, where you can be somewhat aggressive. And it's also going to be an area of life where you're going to be independent. You're going to be an individual. There's going to be a great deal of leadership on your part and confidence too. We are passionate. We're pioneering. We're inspired and inspiring in our Aries house. We are trailblazers within our Aries house. And the Aries house, of course, is tied to our goals, our identity, and our self-discovery. And then also you want to look for the ruling planet of your Aries house, which is Mars, because that is going to provide you with more information. So I would like to know, is there three people perhaps in the audience, you know, if you want to give your Aries house and I will just give a brief, quick description of that. Is that okay? So we have tenth house, 
thank you so the 10th house so this is a house that is associated with our accomplishments our successes and our achievements oh great thank you so we'll do 10 6 and 1 i just do i just do the first three um but thank you for for sharing um everyone as well okay so the 10th house the 10th house is about our successes our achievements and our accomplishments so if you have Aries there, it could very well be that your accomplishments and your achievements are so much about how you lead, how you show up as a leader. And as well, your goals could very well be more long term, right? There are these ambitious long term goals that you have and you may seek to really be assertive and to initiate strongly. And there's this sort of driving forward, very sort of focused, headstrong energy that you place into your vocation if you have one, into your career. But in general, you know, the 10th house is about our life's work, our life's mission, our life's path. So it could be that these things then very much showcase your, your bravery and your courage. Okay, so the sixth house the sixth house, of course, then looks at our everyday tasks, our productivity, our health as well. So you could be um, quite an active person in this way. You know, maybe there's just a lot that you fire through, that you get through on a day-to-day -day basis. Perhaps you're very fast, right? Very fast to want to complete things. And um, maybe as well, you could very well get into... Um, sort of reckless behaviors or accidents with co-workers or um employees stuff like this and possibly too accident prone so health wise you know there could be some accidents there um on your part but whilst it could be that you know there can be the um that the the sickness or ill health to do with the sixth house I actually see this as people with Aries in the sixth house recovering very quickly, right? And um, being quite quick to sort of get over a cold or um, like a health issue, for instance. Of course, there's so much more to that because you got to think about the bigger picture. Um, but I do want to say in terms of productivity, you could be someone who's quite active in this way too, in terms of being productive and just wanting to, yeah, move quickly. Um, possibly as well being a pioneer within your job or a leader within your job. Okay, so the last one then is the first house. Okay, so first house, of course, the first house looks at our identity, our life path. It's about our aims and our goals. You know, we've been talking about this to do with the first house. So I think you may be someone who identifies quite strongly with the Aries qualities um, of being a pioneer, being a trailblazer, being a leader, being quite assertive. Um, and as, as well, I would say that you can be quite quick to, to act, to jump into action. Of course, you've got to think about the bigger picture, you know, think about Mars, where is the chart ruler? Oh, you said it's in the 12th house. Okay, that's interesting. But I do just want to keep it, you know, more so with um, the first house, just for just for um, the house's sake, just to keep it at that. Uh, so yeah, I would also say here that you may be someone who's quite goal oriented, right? There's always something new um, that you're sort of striving for, uh, sort of these goals of having a personal best, I suppose you could say, out beating your personal best. And before, you know, we move on to the planets, this does lead me on to, because you said there, you know, Irene, that you've got Aries in the first house, and I just want to direct this to everyone. Um, if anybody is watching this and you do have an Aries rising, I have a workshop that's coming up in June. It's going to be this life path all about the rising signs. Um, so it's going to be a really great workshop. You know, if you have an Aries rising, the whole point, the unique thing about this workshop is that we're all going to gather together um, in a, a common space and talk about the life path of the Aries rising. So it's a great opportunity to meet other people with Aries risings and to kind of bond over similar sort of themes, but also those differences. All right, um, thank you very much to those of you who did contribute today. Um, and um, Jessica, thank you as well uh, too. Just th thank you everyone for uh, contributing. So any planets, let's see here. 
two seconds so I can just adjust this. Yes. Okay. Any planets in Aries? What Aries planets do you have in your natal chart? Because these are going to show the parts of your personality tied to the Aries traits. So the Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and Rising are going to be more personal. And Jupiter, Chiron, and Saturn are going to be more uh, social and interpersonal. And then Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are going to be more generational. So do keep that in mind. And wherever Mars is placed will tell you more information, of course, about your Aries planets. Because Mars is going to be the dispositor of your Aries planets. And also do consider aspects to your Aries planets. Always think about the bigger picture in astrology. And consider the houses linked to those planets. And like I was saying, remember the deacons of Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. So the final sort of big slide that we're going to be looking at is just a reminder that the sun is about our vitality, our purpose. The moon is about our emotions and our inner self. Mercury is about communication and our thought process. Venus is more so about our values, our worth, our creativity, and our relationships too. Mars then is going to show us our drive, our motivation, our willpower. And then Jupiter here. So the last time Jupiter was in Aries was actually recently. So from 2022 until 2023, you know, Jupiter is so much about expansion, benevolence, wisdom, these types of things, higher learning. And then we have here maturity and success with Saturn. So Saturn rules these types of things in astrology. And Saturn is going to enter Aries 2025. It's going to go back into Pisces for a good portion of 2025. But by February 2026, both Saturn and Neptune will enter Aries. And that's going to be very important. Oh, we've got a lot in store. So I hope that you do keep up with the channel, keep up with my work, because it's going to be exciting. So yeah, uh, Saturn is going to be in Aries from 2025 until 2028. And then we have here, Chiron is currently in Aries. Oh, yeah. So Chiron is so much about our wounds, our healing, our integration. Chiron has been hanging out in Aries since 2018 until present. Um, and then here we see that Uranus, okay, the planet Uranus. Uh, so just a reminder, the ones on the left are more of those personal planets. The ones in the middle are the social planets. And then the ones in the far right are, the, are those generational planets. So Uranus is about innovation and social change. Uranus was in Aries from 2011 until 2019, which is kind of interesting because we saw Twitch come on the scene. <laughs> Twitch, uh, we saw Tinder as well come on the scene. You know, you think about Uranus. Uranus is so much about technology there and those kind of uh, social changes. So we see the social changes through these um, applications. Would you say applications? I don't know. Does Twitch have an application on the phone? I don't know. I don't really use Twitch. <laughs> but, yeah. I'm sure there's people out there. Okay. Let's think about Neptune then. So Neptune can look at our distortions, our spirituality. And like I said there a moment ago, Neptune is going to enter Aries very soon. It's actually going to enter Aries 2025 for a little bit. Then it will dip back into Pisces. And then, oh, from 2026 onwards, we're in for a new era, everyone, a new chapter. But anyway, it'll be there from 2025 until 2039. Um, but... Also, the last thing I want to say is that, well, the last time Pluto was in Aries, now Pluto is so much about regeneration and power. So the last time Pluto was in Aries was from 1822 until 1853. And what we saw during that time is just one quick example was the swing riots. And I'm pretty sure um, that that involved um the word let me look that up the word i can never remember uh da, 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 da. let's see what they the it involved there was definitely fire it's basically fire I, I can't remember the proper term um 
when it comes to, you know, using fire to destroy buildings and things like that. Um, but yeah, that of course was also quite a violent time as well. So yeah, I just wanted to share that uh, to do with Pluto being in Aries, but you know, there's so much more <laughs> to be said about that. I just wanted to give a quick sort of example. You can even look into that yourself um, there to do with the swing riots and to even think about the dates. So when Pluto was in Aries last and sort of, you know, what happens could be interesting to kind of go down a historical um, route there to do with uh, the Pluto generations. But I digress. That is us, everyone. That is us today. Let me just adjust. Arson. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. That is that is the word. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, yeah, that is that's the word. Okay, so that is us, everybody. Thank you so much for for watching today. I appreciate you listening. Um, again, I mean, if you do have an Aries rising, if you're interested in the workshop. Oh, it'd be great to have you. I think it would be amazing to get a grip of Aries Risings in one space and to really talk and discuss the chart, to discuss your life path. And if it goes well, you know, we could do it for all of the rising signs. It would be just the best project, I think. It would be amazing to meet people, you know, to meet you and um, to collaborate in this way in terms of sharing experiences and just talking through things. But it's also going to be highly educational. And I really want to provide a lot of really useful information so that you can get so much from the experience from the workshop. Uh, so yeah, the whole point of it is for it to be educational, interactive and fun. So thank you for listening. If you do wish to book a reading with me, you can do so by going to hannahselsworth.com. And if you really, really did enjoy this presentation today, you can always buy me a coffee. The link is right there. And yeah, that is us, everyone. Um, Jessica, you said, oh, a Gemini uh, rising workshop. Yes, yes. I think I'm going to do it in order. Um, I thought that is, that's the plan, but we'll see. We will see how it goes. Um, but thank you very much for your feedback, Jessica. And thank you as well, Rachel, uh, for your feedback. Thank you. Thank you to everyone um, for watching today. I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. We only have a couple more signs, actually, in this archetype series. We've got Taurus and Gemini. Um, and then I'm also hoping to do a presentation about Jupiter in Gemini and possibly Uranus in Gemini as well. It's going to be very exciting. Anyway. Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely weekend. And I will talk to you all very, very soon. Bye.